Hello everybody, this is Daniel Morrison, software engineer for Matrix TSL, and again with me I've got Ben Rowland, one of our embedded engineers. Hi Daniel. Um, so today we're going to be using Flowcode 8 and programming the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we're going to show how to set up the Raspberry Pi, how to send a program to the Raspberry Pi, and we're going to do this um, through showing a, a fairly simple project. You should be able to see in the corner of the screen we've, we've got our Raspberry Pi, which you can view, and connected to it we've got a Sense Hat. Is that right, Ben? That's right, yeah. yes. Um, <clears throat> we, we actually acquired this Sense Hat from, um, there was a, a bit of a space competition, um, and we, we, we've uh, managed to get our hands on it just to do some playing with and, and, and make a component around it and, and make sure that we, we, we have the, the Raspberry Pi up and running correctly. Yeah, so we'll, we'll show you how easy it is to program the Raspberry Pi and uh, how much potential flow code gives you for creating components and, and manipulating various peripherals uh, without having to do any C programming or Python programming. Yeah. Yeah, so shall we start off then? Well, I'll start off. Um, I'm, I've, I've selected uh, the Raspberry Pi chip family, and within there, we've got several options. We've got a, an Eblox board, and then we've got the Raspberry Pi 2 and the Raspberry Pi 3. We're using the Pi 3, so I've selected the R Pi 3. Under general options, um, you need to provide an IP address, and this basically allows us to uh, reprogram the Pi across the network. Now, this can be uh, on the Raspberry Pi 3, it has Wi Fi built in, so as long as the Pi is set up and, and, and connected to the Wi Fi, uh, otherwise, you can simply plug in Ethernet. Find the IP address and then and then type it in here. I know that it's uh, for for the for our Raspberry Pi. It's one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot fifty five. But this will obviously vary depending on on your um, network setup. And and it depends if you've if you've changed your default credentials for your username and password. That's as well. right. Yeah. So um, this Raspberry Pi is is running Raspbian, which I think by default. The username is always Pi, and the the password is always um, Raspberry. I think. Raspberry. Yeah. yeah. So um, most people never change these settings. So if you buy a Raspberry Pi and it comes with a, an SD card of Raspbian, Raspbian. I'm sorry. Um, if you install that, uh, connect a Raspberry Pi to your network. As soon as you get the IP address, you're you're more or less good to go. I think so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we enter the details and we click OK. Now I've I've started to put. To put together a component to drive this um, uh, send shield. Um, uh, so under shield, um, uh, sorry, it's a sense hat. Uh, I've got I've got a component called a sense hat. There's no simulation quite yet, um, but I have got various things like the um, the hat is controlled through an I2C bus. Um, so I've got things like the the channel the the I2C pins, some various other details that come from the uh, I2C CAL component. And we're just going to be calling some, some um, very basic macros um, to, to show that the board's uh, up and running. And, and to just demonstrate the sort of the programming procedure as well. Um, yeah. so, so before we, we actually create any icons, what, what are we actually trying to do? We're going to be manipulating the LED array, is that right? Yeah, I think um, we... we We'll um, control the LED array and we'll maybe uh, read the joystick as well um, and ju just yeah. just to provide a bit more um, hands-on experience. Yeah, yeah, a bit of variety from, rather <laughs> yeah. than just showing LEDs all the time. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah always... <laughs> There's nothing wrong with LEDs, but... No, no. <laughs> um, so under, uh, under the components tab, um, you can see I've got three macros already for my components. Um, so I've got uh, a set pixel, which allows me to control uh, any of the pixels on the 8x8 array. I've got a set all, which just basically draws uh, a colour to all LEDs. And then I've got a macro to read read the value from the joystick. So it returns a zero if nothing's being pressed, and otherwise it returns a value corresponding to which direction is being pressed. Um, so very simply, uh, we could start off with having a... Uh, we could set all and uh, and let's just make the um, the red. Let's let's set all the LEDs to be red. Now the the values are between zero and two five five. Two five five being the brightest. Um, so I'm just going to set um, the LEDs all to red uh, with fifty. So that's like one fifth of the brightness, just to uh, 
yeah, stop blinding the, yeah, the, the okay. camera we've got <laughs> as well. Yeah. So it's, it's literally, uh, we save our project, so I'm going to just save it as Flickr 1, and then it's, it's literally just clicking the compile to chip button. We go through the normal compile and link process, and it launches the programmer. And then you can see um, on the on the on the webcam that all the LEDs are now lit up red. The the flickering is uh, only seen by the webcam. Yeah, it, it looks solid for us. I think we need we need a better webcam. I yeah, think. maybe maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's make this a bit more interesting. Um, so if we if we add a loop to our program, and we do something like read joystick, uh, we can we can read the joystick into a variable. So let's let's put that into a byte variable called joy um, and we can if we hover over the function we can see that um, if we press if we press the joystick down we get a value of one if we press it up we get a value of four so let's just have a decision if joy equals one this is down then we're going to um, set all the LEDs red and in, instead, if we press the joystick up, so joy equals four, then we'll set all the LEDs to green. So we can save the project and again compile and to chip. Before before we compile to chip as well, one really um, important but also quite cool uh, thing to note is when you compile the same project to the Raspberry Pi. It, it will terminate the program already running on the Raspberry Pi in a similar way to a microcontroller. Yeah. So, we, of course, the mechanism is, is, is quite different. You know, we're doing this over the network and, and we're running a, a program on a Linux-based operating system. But the idea is as you make changes to your project, you can keep pressing the recompile button and you don't end up with a bunch of conflicting programs running on the Raspberry Pi. That's right. Well, so. Yeah, if, you, if, you've, if you've got a project, here we've got a project called Flowcode 1. If you try and write this project to the Pi again, um, then it basically it sees that there's a project called Flowcode One already running, so it terminates that and then re, re downloads and restarts that Flowcode One task. If you wanted two tasks to run at once, then you could have two differently named projects, and these would then be independent of each other. Brilliant. All right, let's compile them. So there we go. Um, when we press down on the joystick, we get red. When we press up, we get green. So that's working quite nicely. And you can see that while the while the program is running on the Raspberry Pi, we actually get um, we get a a console uh, application here, which actually shows that the the task is running. What's really nice is. Um, if we just close this session, this basically kills the task so that, as you can see, the program's no longer running. Mm. But what we can do with that console is under tools and matrix tools, we've got a console debugger. And that allows us to print strings to the uh, console. So I can basically uh, add here um, a string for Joy up, sorry, joy down, <laughs> and joy up. And this allows us a really nice uh, way of debugging our programs. So if we, whoops, I'm running <laughs> the simulator there. But if we <laughs> compile it to our Raspberry Pi, and I bring the, the console window back on, here we go. Then when I click up, you can see that on the on the console we're getting the up message, and then when I click down, so that's a really nice way of seeing that our program's running and wh wh where in the execution we are. And and one quite cool feature as well, which might not be immediately obvious, is the fact that this is happening over the network rather than having to plug it in via USB like a like a typical microcontroller. Is the Raspberry Pi doesn't even have to be in the same room as as the computer that's programming it. It doesn't even have to um, be in the same country. Or the same fair. country, yeah. <laughs> so, so you get a sort of remote um, ability to program, and 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 using this console functionality, you can get data and feedback yeah. back from the Raspberry Pi as well. So yeah, very cool. Yeah. So I mean, hopefully that pretty much sums everything up. Um, Hopefully. 
yeah. uh, but the you know the functionality of components we plan on improving things like that as well but, yeah. but the key thing is that you can now flow code uh, you can now program the Raspberry Pi using flow code brilliant so yeah so thanks for listening everybody no, thank, thank you thank, thank you, you very ben. much <laughs>